We really, really appreciate it. This is um, Team Exhibits Development Group in um, Jeffrey Curley and Associates, and I will let Amy Noble Sykes um, welcome you. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, we have, once again, a wonderful, robust audience out there, lots of friends joining us today. Uh, many of you who already know about the exhibition and a number of you that might be new to the worst case scenario. Um, once again, we are thrilled uh, to be with our partners from Jeffrey M. Curley and Associates and the Franklin Institute to present to you one of the latest and greatest uh, projects that we are developing uh, with Franklin Institute and our partners from Quirk Books. Um, you've all heard that um, Abby Bish and the Franklin Institute will be premiering this exhibition in October. Uh, we have our friends from the Fleet Science Center aboard and um, a number of other uh, venues in queue. Uh, the purpose of today is to give you an, an update on the 100% concept that has now been approved. And we are seeking three additional venues to be early subscribers so that we can do the full-blown exhibition that will then tour internationally. And so I'm going to turn it over to Jeffrey Curley and his team. Once again, they are making a phenomenal exhibit, and we are thrilled um, that you all joined us today. So thanks, everyone. Awesome. Thank you, Amy, and everyone for being here today. Okay, so worst case scenario, we totally just experienced one. So this is kind of uh, an, an excellent uh, start into uh, what it is that this whole exhibition is all about. Um, so with the worst case scenario exhibition, I'm going to go to the next slide. We just want to tell you a little bit about where this all came from. So like the, the books, as you guys know, they came out like 20 years ago, and they really just dig into, you know, what sort of um, survival scenarios you can get into and, and how to get out of it. It's very, very kind of deadpan, assuming that everyone's going to at some point in their life be in an airplane that's going uh, flying through the sky without a pilot and you have to land it. Or perhaps you're going to be stuck in quicksand and you have to figure out how to get out. Or perhaps, you know, you uh, forgot to bring your homework to class and you have to figure out how to get out of that. So all of the uh, worst case scenarios um, throughout life are, are represented within these books and now within the exhibition. So, you know, it's a huge uh, hit when it came out. It was on the best time, uh, New York Times bestseller list. Uh, they sold 10 million copies of this thing. And then since that first publication, they've come out with just a couple dozen books and really kind of focusing on not just the adult crowd, which the first book was aimed towards, but towards the younger uh, audiences as well. So the demographics for this particular book and the publications was extremely broad. So this year, they're coming out with the next one, which is their 20th anniversary. And they asked uh, the Franklin and us to participate in the celebration by creating this exhibition. So the relaunch, uh, it really brings out some of the best of the classic series and also updates it for this uh, time, you know, two decades later, what sort of new scenarios we might be encountering, you know, such as using technology and communications. Uh, so really kind of bringing it up to speed. And we are still working with, um, or they're still working with National Geographic. They're going to do a new publication of their kids' books that are going to go out. Um, there's a, a new video game, of, uh, a, a virtual reality video game that comes with this. Uh, some other games, and of course, um, what we all hope that you're going to participate in, which is the exhibition. So looking at the exhibition and the whole mission behind it, you know, it's, 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 it's fun. It's also uh, engaging for understanding the different scenarios that you might encounter, but really it comes back down to uh, everyone's understanding of what you need to know if you are about to head into any sort of situation. So it's really practical understanding, practical skills uh, through uh, uh, physical engagement is, is what this exhibition is going to bring to the table. So looking at who it's for, as we mentioned, the books were extremely popular for, um, you know, an older group as well as the younger group. So we really have, you know, uh, anything from, from uh, uh, young children all the way through, you know, mid-40s, 50s, uh, who kind of grew up with these books. So there's a, a brand recognition for those people, uh, a little heavier on the, on the male side, but the, the children's books really brought in a lot of those young readers who wanted something that was fun and engaging. So we have a lot of those younger people as well. Uh, the exhibition follows suit with all of this. Um, and it's, it's universal. Like these experiences are kind of for everyone. So uh, it does apply it to that as well. So when we are developing the exhibition, we're developing it uh, 
to be engaging for adults as well as engaging for children. So this is something that, like the Mythbusters that we all developed uh, in the past, it's an exhibition that uh, allows parents and kids to come to it together. Uh, it allows young people to really engage in their own way, and it allows for those uh, older groups that may not have children uh, or may want to participate in the Science uh, Center without bringing their kids or grandkids and really have a time for their own. So we're really uh, focusing on all age groups and all demographics. Now with this particular project, we're digging deeper into how to engage the community itself. And as we're developing it, we're really looking for um, important points that tie into most of the um, uh, urban markets throughout the country. And with this, we're, we're really looking to not only talk about worst case scenarios, you know, like if you're being charged at by rhinos, but also worst case scenarios of what it's like to get up every day and do um, activities in your own community. How do you approach, you know, situations? So it really does become relevant uh, for you personally in your everyday life through these uh, almost metaphoric worst case scenarios um, uh, that we're talking about, uh, you know, in the exhibition itself. So let's talk about the exhibition. So it's really developed uh, in the scale of about six to 8,000 square feet. You can see where this floor plan is very modular. So it, it, it permits us to find some uh, curious spaces and really work within those, uh, but also expand into some of the larger spaces. So again, knowing that this, this needs to uh, focus on the breadth of, of spaces and venues that are uh, throughout the country and not the world, uh, we're making it as flexible as possible to make it look uh, and function extremely well in your space. The goal for this is uh, 300 plus guests an hour. Uh, so we want to really be able to maximize your heavy attendance during spring break and during the holidays, during summer, making sure we can get as many people through the exhibition as, po as possible. The dwell time in here is about 45 minutes to 50 minutes is our target uh, with that number of guests going through at any one time. Uh, it's extremely interactive. So you'll see uh, shortly it's, it's a very um, high energy, high fun, high play, high education uh, experience uh, that's physical as well as um, mind supporting. Uh, the staff for it, it, this is always an important question, how many people do you have to have in there? Uh, for the minimum, we would say no less than two. Uh, on days that the attendance is higher, you probably want to go to three or even more to make sure the guest experience is really, really good. Obviously, we all know that the, the guests always learn best when they have one-on-one -on -one interactions with floor staff and facilitators, and we encourage as much of that as possible. But on the slow days, you know, having two people is probably appropriate. So here we're going to start walking through the uh, experience. We start in the Hall of Fame. So, you know, there, there are plenty of people out there, both the uh, experts in the field as well as people who have gone through worst case scenarios and we're celebrating them as heroes like they are. So anything from uh, first responders, firefighters, uh, animal uh, trainers, um, uh, as well as people who have been in a situation where maybe their car has fallen through the ice or maybe, you know, they have been um, out in the wilderness and had to deal with uh, uh, wild animals. All of these people we're celebrating here. So we're really looking at those who know uh, and then those who have experienced. Now, those who know are very important here because we want to make sure that the guests as they walk through uh, have a strong understanding that we're not making this up. You know, the, the, the content that is within this experience comes directly from the professionals in the field. So we're applying what they know in a way that's easy to replicate, easy to understand, and easy to utilize uh, in the future. But also knowing that the people who have gone through these scenarios, they're to be celebrated too, and we need to learn from them. Because every time you go through a scenario, you learn from that event and you apply it uh, to future events. So within that first gallery, uh, we really do get that introduction, but we also see some objects too. Uh, we'll see objects from uh, the professional world as objects from uh, uh, you know, what you might have around you, and then we apply that uh, to the gymnasium, which you see now in front of you. So the introduction through the, the lobby gives people the mission, gives people the um, uh, a reason to start moving forward and an understanding of what their challenge is throughout the experience. And you can see here, the gymnasium is very active. We have a couple of hero units, one of them that you're looking at here, another one is a ball pit. Um, now with that, uh, we have, uh, it's very much set up like a gymnasium. So it's, it's these structures that are, that are similar to, um, that are similar to uh, what you would look at if you went into an obstacle course 
or into a training facility. And that's, and that's exactly what we are intending. So the activities are applied to different scenarios. And each one of the interactives has an activity that may be applied to one, two, or three scenarios. Now, the important thing with understanding what the kind of the, the, the method of approaching a worst case scenario, uh, we want uh, to apply into each one of these interactives. Now, that method is, is important, and, and we have it here on the screen. It's keeping calm, thinking logically, sort of uh, observing what's around you. What, what assets do you have at this particular moment that can help you through these situations? Be creative. Think outside of the box. You know, pre prepare a plan, whether you have to do this very quickly or whether you have time to prepare a plan. Uh, you solve the problem through that plan, apply it, and if you don't succeed, try again. So again, it's very much like doing an experiment. It's very much like the scientific method. Um, and we, we really want to encourage that thought process because that is what you're going to be working with. Again, if it's you know, dealing with something at work, dealing with something at school or at home, it's the same sort of method that you're going to be using if you're you know, out in the field and you really, apply, uh, really find yourself in, in a dangerous situation. So within the gymnasium, this is, this is kind of the, where the, most of the en energy happens with the exhibition. You'll see things where you have to jump from train car to train car with things moving around. We'll have stands where um, you can uh, learn about how to detect a lie, or you can get into the ball pit where you can uh, uh, try to, to save yourself from, from being sucked down into quicksand. There's an avalanche pit that uh, you can fill up the avalanche and, and it'll fall upon you and you sort of learn about that process of swimming out of the snow as the, smoke, as the, the balls are coming towards you. So again, you can see that there's a lot of activity. We're also very aware that, that we need to have um, places for people to participate that aren't quite as active too. So we have a number of these scenarios, if not most of these scenarios, where you can uh, activate uh, non-physical uh, experiences as well, so like the germ tunnel and um, you know, how do you escape from a bad date? So within the gymnasium, we also have our pros, the worst case scenario pro. Um, this person, this facilitator is, uh, is my favorite part. So the pro is, uh, is, a, is, a, is, a, is someone who's going to be there who's going to be throwing out and helping your guests throughout the whole thing. The whole idea behind this character is that they've wanted to be the pro for all worst case scenarios since they were a little kid and they've been coming to this gymnasium or the exhibition uh, ever since then. And they know everything. Uh, and they really want to be there to help uh, other people get to be as much of a pro as they are. So we really want to engage this playful, fun um, uh, experience along with it. Uh, everyone is kind of, you know, decked out in these, these tube socks and handlebar mustaches, no matter who they are. Um, and uh, they'll be sitting around the pool. Now, there's a couple reasons to have the pro. One is to have that one-on-one -on -one interaction. It's very important to do so. Um, but also, you know, since this is a fairly active environment, just making sure that safety is uh, being adhered to and understanding of, of keeping an eye on the guests. So there's a, a lifeguard stand at the, at the ball pit that the pro can stay at. And every 20 minutes or so, you know, you can pull out the bullhorn and be like, burr, 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 here's your pro tip. Um, and, uh, and they'll be there to, to help out. Now, we also have uh, someone, a little bit of a blast from the past, and we are grateful for this. Um, we'll have audio graphics throughout, and this is being conducted by our dear friend, Burt Reynolds. And Burt Reynolds uh, did record the audio book, which we're allowed to use, and we'll be applying that throughout the exhibition. So in his beautiful deadpan voice, we will hear um, uh, different scenarios being described uh, throughout uh, the experience. And just to, to reiterate, this is uh, all going to be in Spanish and English. So even the audio graphics will be in Spanish too. So we want to make sure that that's applied throughout the entire experience equally. Once you've gotten through the gymnasium, you, know, you, you learned about what your challenge is. You've learned about the experts. You have your, your, the people that you're looking up to, which are you, you know, and you want to become the pro. You go through the gymnasium. You learn about the different techniques and how to apply those techniques and assets two different scenarios, and now you get into the challenges. At the end, we have four challenges. Uh, essentially, it's a, a, a quiz that you uh, apply to each one of these different challenges. What happens if you're stuck on ice? How do you actually get out of uh, frozen water and onto a, a, a piece of ice? What are the physics behind that? Uh, there are a number of questions for you to apply there. What happens when um, 
you know, there's an earthquake and you, you're desperate for water and you find yourself facing a toilet that's filled with water in both the bowl and the basin behind, what exactly should you do at that point? Um, what if you're uh, trying to avoid the laser beams of a UFO flying through the urban jungle and you're trying to jump from one car to another, uh, another car? Those important things are tested here in the final challenge area. It's also an incredible place for photo ops, playfulness, kind of really pulling everything together into a really enjoyable conclusion to the experience itself. So with all of this, as you can see, it's, it's a, it's a fun-filled, engaging, uh, uh, playful, but also serious environment. So with it, all the uh, experiences all of the scenarios tie back to the sciences behind it. So even though we know that there's a, a system or a method that you need to go through in order to um, uh, conduct yourself through a scenario, there's also science behind it that uh, you need to understand or you can learn to understand while doing this. So jumping from train car to train car, you're looking, about, looking at physics, you're looking at uh, perpetual motions, uh, you're looking at um, you know, your own biology, and uh, of course, understanding how to assess the situation. Um, so we wanna make sure that there's going to be STEM parallels throughout the entire experience from beginning to end. Uh, and of course, uh, some of the other pluses here, we just mentioned Spanish to English. Um, it, it really is something that is going to be able to engage people of all ages uh, in every way. Uh, with it, we're, we're uh, working with the Franklin. There's a marketing kit and style guide, which is tied obviously directly to the books, being able to use and utilize that IP brand, which is so strong, and all the marketing that they're doing this year for their anniversary will be applied to the exhibition. So there should be visibility throughout. We want to ride on those coattails and make sure that we're bringing that visibility to the exhibition itself by tying into that style guide. Um, this is a great opportunity for adult programming and events. Uh, this is great for corporate events. If you're looking to kind of amp up that part of your programming, this is a perfect one to do that. Um, and, you know, the beauty of it is that it's, it's also going to be you know, kind of stunningly gorgeous for evening parties or um, a, events for older people um, going in there, having a couple of drinks and really just understanding those worst case scenarios and, and having a good time. So all of that too comes along with the exhibition. So I'm gonna hand this off to Willis to talk about the, uh, the fee model, but I, I do want to reiterate something that Amy had started out the conversation with. And, and we are really trying to do something new here in developing this exhibition. Typically exhibitions are developed by you know, a company, they get some funding from investors, they rent this thing out. We, we are looking to create you know, something on, on the level of a blockbuster style exhibition that's, that's large, robust, IP driven without the cost. And you know, to do that, we're, we're trying to be as creative as possible in how to make that happen. And we need your help to do that. We need to be able to create something that you guys are comfortable in coming in early and participating in, uh, you know, taking that, that leap of faith, that risk uh, to come along with us and, uh, and, you know, sort of jump on board before the exhibition opens. Because it's through that funding that we're able to make the exhibition as robust and beautiful as it is. So I, I encourage you and ask you uh, to, to think about how, you know, that might be able to happen and, and really kind of bring this to fruition to be the absolute most phenomenal exhibition we've seen in years. So thank you very much for your time. Jeffrey, thank you very much for that uh, wonderful overview of the exhibition. We're all uh, tremendously proud of kind of the work that's, that's come along in the progress of developing this exhibition. And we hope that that's definitely represented in, uh, in the document that you've seen so far. Um, so what I will be talking about is just kind of the, the basics for the rental fee, um, as well as just kind of the structure of our rental agreements going forward. Um, so as you see, uh, the, the baseline rental fee is about $85,000 per month, um, and we're booking typically three-month uh, blocks uh, with the option to extend or book double bookings, um, and then that would... Um, not include the only kind of additional expense outside of that would be uh, the inbound shipping um, coming to your venue. Uh, so we would be happy to provide an estimate for that um, if you'd like to reach out to me for that. 
Um, and then uh, kind of moving from there to the fee, uh, I think it's important to, you know, go through the, the tour schedule that we have at present. Um, as you see, uh, you know, we have our wonderful collaborators at the Franklin who are spearheading uh, this exhibition and will be opening it this coming October. Um, and they'll be taking it until April 19th, 2020. Um, and then the venue to follow them after a quick, uh, you know, transcontinental journey uh, will be the Ruben H. Fleet uh, Science Center in San Diego. They will be hosting from May 21st, 2020 to September 7th, 2020. Um, and then we get into the venue period that you see are available after that. Um, so, you know, we do have some penciled in interest in some of these areas. Um, to just kind of state a few kind of, uh, you know, block line uh, bookings that we're, you know, currently penciling in. Um, and I use the term pencil because um, if you are interested in booking uh, one of these these uh, openings, um, we'd be happy to, you know, start that conversation off with you. Um, we just want you to be aware that there would be competing interest. Um, so, you know, the, the, um, the bookings that we're currently kind of looking at is it looks like we've got a summer 2022 booking that is uh, starting to line up. We've got a um, fall 2021 to January 2022 booking that's about to line up. Um, then we've got, uh, you know, a November 2020 to, um, to April uh, 6, 2021 booking. Um, and there is another one additionally for uh, the summer of 2021. Um, so if you guys have, you know, an idea of the dates that you potentially be looking to, you know, book worst case scenario, I would be happy to um, tender you a proposal for those dates. Um, otherwise, um, I want to, you know, open up the floor to, uh, you know, the questions and feedback that we're, you know, we're really looking to, uh, you know, kind of get from uh, this, this webinar experience. So um, if you guys would like to either post your questions on the side um, or, uh, you know, Take your, your microphone off mute. We would be happy to answer those now. Um, and yes, uh, David, we uh, we can send you a link to this presentation. It is being recorded. So we'll be uh, distributing that in a follow-up email to each of you. Yeah, so as well as said, um, we'd love um, for the Q&A to start now. If you guys have any questions, we'd love um, you to throw them at us. Um, and one question that we do have is, what is the age minimum for participation? As Jeffrey, I'll take that. So the age minimum, we're really creating this for, uh, for all ages. So the things that you may want to look out for, and we've been discussing this internally and also with the Franklin Institute, is uh, if we have a younger crowd, you, we may want to look at how that cycles through things like the ball pit. Uh, obviously, we need to be careful if there are people who are larger and playing the ball pit along with younger people, just having sort of a, a cycle through schedule. So we've been discussing, um, you know, how we might be able to say that there's a free swim time or an age group time um, so that we can make sure that all people are engaging uh, throughout the exhibition in the way that they feel is appropriate. Uh, nearly all of the interactives do have a physical component that's uh, totally feasible for younger younger people and that we're really looking at you know like uh, around three-ish and up for those physical activities education wise we always look at around uh, uh, seven and eight and up uh, for the educational target because we know that that aligns mostly with the school groups and the stem activities that are applied to that so uh, and of course old people too we love old people <laughs> Thank you, Jeffrey. We do love old people and young people and everyone in between. Um, so uh, and the next question that we got was from Amanda, um, and Amanda is asking, what would be admission fees or is this a uh, free experience? So, um, you know, it's not exactly. Um, all right. So Amy wants to take this one. So here's Amy. The great news is that you guys get to decide what your financial model is with this one. This is just a flat rental fee from EDG GMCA. And so your upcharge is uh, really entirely up to you. If you do upcharge, um, of course, there will be some sharing with Quirk. And so we can talk about that with each of you individually. And we're really happy to support it. If you are um, looking at doing upcharges for the first time, that's really a daunting um, experience for the institution. Um, so we're happy to help. Uh, we have a lot of, obviously, experience in that category. 
Um, and just kind of like one additional note, kind of along the lines of the fee uh, for this exhibition. Um, we really think that this uh, exhibition is a, a very strong value, um, you know, for, for what its fee represents. Um, it's, you know, an exhibition that's designed along the same, um, you know, kind of standard and quality uh, assurance lines as the Mythbusters exhibition was. So, um, you know, we're really hoping to provide like, you know, this superior kind of premium quality exhibition, but at a price that is um, affordable for the current market. So, um, so, you know, moving on to the next question and a great question indeed, one that we've been answering um, quite a bit in our conversation so far, but, um, you know, what is the maintenance for the ball pit and uh, how big, question mark, um, how big is the ball pit? We can answer that as well, but, um, and does it come with a ball washer? So. Paul, let's answer your question. Here's Jeffrey. Um, we all know that uh, a worst case scenario for all of us would be germs on balls. Um, so we uh, we definitely have built into it. So there, you can see in the diagrams, there's there's like the the, the fall uh, platform. Underneath that fall platform, we have a, a space that is dedicated for a ball washer. So they're right there on site. You don't need to like pull the ball washer in at night or anything like that, you can go ahead and, and uh, do that maintenance right there um, as often as you see fit. We will suggest how often that is. I believe it's once a week that um, you should wash the balls. Um, but again, you may find that on heavy, heavy attendance days, you might want to do it more often on light attendance, maybe a little less. Um, the ball pit itself, I, I need to get back to you on. I forget exactly how big it is. I think it's like 20 by 24 or something like that so it's 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 big enough to do the activities and there's not so big that um uh that it's like a swimming pool so but it 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 does sit as kind of our iconic center of the exhibition so it'll be it'll be the grounding spot of the exhibition and i'm going to add something this is amy um many of you on the line have hosted our other wonderful exhibition mythbusters and you know that there was a game-changing interactive in mythbusters where we were bringing a big water feature to uh, the institution and it went uh, beautifully so we believe this will as well um, as jeffrey's saying it's very high impact and many of you know about uh, snarkitecture and the su success that snarkitecture has had with their beach um, so um, it is in spirit of that, and um, institutions that we've spoken to um, have not had any issues other than you do have to clean those balls. Well, there you have it, folks. So you will have to clean uh, those balls. Um, so, uh, you know, moving on to the next question, another really good question um, from David. So um, have others expressed any concerns with insurance coverage? Our organization gets concerned whenever we propose these types of activities. Um, and, and understandable considering kind of the physical activity involved. Um, Amy, Jeffrey, Jeffrey, all right, here's Jeffrey. This was one of the very first things we talked about with the charrette when we we're developing this. Um, there's, there's a sensitivity towards uh, uh, these insurance issues when we do anything active. Now, more and more, we've been looking at, you know, highly interactive experiences as something that draws people to uh, the experiences because of that physicality. Um, but it's also, you know, more and more of a chance of, of people, you know, finding a way to get injured. Um, there are a couple of things. One, having the, uh, the pro inside of the space to oversee the activities of the guest is going to be important. That's, uh, that's one. But uh, even more so is that uh, with the Franklin Institute, we're applying a um, – uh, a waiver that the guests will sign that comes when you purchase a ticket or when you get a ticket to the museum itself. Uh, so that, um, that insurance waiver will be uh, something that we will suggest and we'll have a draft for you. There, there are online sites that actually do this uh, uh, fairly quickly online, uh, as well as, of course, the physical one. So we are working through what the easiest way to do it. And when we do this at the Franklin, we'll uh, go ahead and decide with them what it is best for the Franklin. And we hope that that'll be something that can be implemented for every single institution after that. All right. Thank you, Jeffrey. Um, so we missed one question um, right before David's question. Uh, so um, so uh, the question from the Frost was, um, are there any exhibit components that are not accessible? Um, Jeffrey, do you want to? 
sure. So, uh, of course, ADA is a huge issue with uh, with all of us. We want to make sure that everything is as accessible as possible. We have been working very diligently to make sure that all of the experiences have some form of accessibility. Um, of course, there are some that are much more difficult than others, uh, such things as the climbing wall. Um, you know, or, uh, you know, getting into the ball pit. Um, but with those, we have uh, accessible interactives that uh, are part of those experiences, uh, as well as creating uh, accessible interactives that are 100% that are accessible for physical ailments. Um, but we're also looking at how to uh, engage with other accessibility as well. Obviously, those uh, uh, audio graphics are important to us, having <clears throat> areas that you can uh, work with sound and sight, uh, really trying to minimize the uh, the language and using uh, visuals and images, uh, tactile points, all of those things we're applying so that uh, even though this is a challenging space, it's also perhaps in some ways a more accessible space because of it. Uh, so we can go through, and, and if you'd like, I'd be happy to go through interactive by interactive uh, and discuss how uh, we're dealing with the accessibility questions for those. Uh, and you'll see that some of them are, are very obvious and some of them may not that all said, there are going to be some things that not everyone can do um, because it is a physical environment, and, uh, and that's something that, that we're making a choice on, um, but, uh, but hopefully we're supporting you know, the other activities to make sure that everyone has a robust and uh, uh, individualized experience. Uh, thank you, Jeffrey. So the next question um, from the Frost. We understand that the exhibit themes circle around critical thinking and problem solving. What STEM science does this exhibition tie to? Engineering, et cetera. Joseph. Um, so the question was, we understand that the exhibit themes circle around critical thinking and problem solving. What STEM science does the exhibition tie to? That's a great question. So STEM science, it, it kind of ties to much of it. I mean, as we are looking at uh, each of these interactive experiences, uh, it, it aligns with a particular worst case scenario. Now, those uh, scenarios all have um, a background in science. So I'll give you an example. One is um, uh, looking at uh, how you deal with a downed power line. So it's a, it's a, it's a shock walk. Uh, and the whole idea is to get an understanding of what um, – uh, insulators are what's a conductor, how you create a circuit, and all of those are applied to this particular scenario. Um, so in the end, you don't want to get shocked by a down power line. You want to survive. But in the process of, of uh, practicing that particular activity, you're also introduced to the science that's behind it. Each one of these things has um, – has that basis to it. So not only do we have the method, uh, which can be closely aligned to the scientific method, uh, we also have uh, the sciences that are aligned with each one of these activities. Avalanche, we're talking about uh, particles and particle size uh, and physics, um, uh, even with the animal husbandry when we're talking about being caught uh, by wild animals and what you're supposed to do for that. So uh, we, we really kind of dig into all sorts of um, uh, uh, sciences throughout. All right, um, so the next question from Amanda. Um, so the question is, um, is there a traveling actor uh, for the facilitator character slash safety promoter or would each institution need to interview and fill that position? There is not a traveling actor and, and there's, there's uh, you know, I, I would love to think that the, and I could be wrong, but I would love to think that the facilitator is really, it, it takes a character of the people that you already have in your institution. So really looking at some of your facilitators, I know that not everyone's going to be comfortable with this role, um, but, but really applying their own personalities to it. So there's no scripts, there's no, like, they have to do this or have to do that, but, you know, the more flamboyant people that you have on your floor already uh, are, are really the ones that we want to engage with this because they know your institution best. Bringing someone in from the outside uh, really, really doesn't do um, as good of a job as someone who knows your guests, knows your other uh, experiences, knows uh, the science that you're teaching and your mission. So we really encourage uh, to find people within the institution to, to bring in to help facilitate this. All right. Um, and then uh, the last question that we have posted right now um, from Paul, what diversity other than gender is reflected in the experts and in the imagery in the exhibit and marketing? 
Yeah, that's that's a great question. And this is this is something that we are deep in uh, uh, figuring out. Um, so, you know, we could easily put, you know, a representation of each culture in the experts, but that doesn't do anyone any good. So we will have a diverse uh, 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 you know, group of people that we are looking at through the experts. But what's probably more important is how does this exhibition align with everyone in other ways. So yes, we want to see ourselves in those experts, but we also want to see our lives and our experiences applied in the experiences within the exhibition. This is something that, that we've, um, and we are going to continue to work with, and we're going to work with uh, groups throughout Philadelphia as we're developing it for Philadelphia, but getting an understanding of what the language is, what the images are, uh, what people are, are ref- you know, working with on their daily lives that, that may typically come into a museum and be like, you know, you don't get me. You don't know what I have to go through every single morning when I wake up. And we, we need to know that before we can even apply that content. So we're looking at how we're writing it. We're looking at the imagery that we're applying to it, uh, all of the graphics. And we, we're, we're looking to engage some artists from, um, from Philadelphia to do some of the detail work within the exhibition. But again, reflecting back to the cultures surrounding the institutions, and, and that's a vast culture. You know, it's, it's not just African-American, it's not just Latino, it's, it's not just uh, 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 European, it is all across the board. And we're really trying to make sure that the, um, the experiences that we're creating are, are uh, reflective of that, you know, that blanket, that quilt of, of individuals that could potentially come to this exhibition. And what Jeffrey's talking about is um, intersectionality. So just recognizing that everyone sort of comes with different um, backgrounds and whatnot and identifying different ways and different situations of gender, um, sexuality, uh, race, et cetera. So um, we are thinking very heavily with each interactive and each um, visual component and how we're writing it. And so rest assured that that is um, being very mindfully done with the Franklin and with additional folks as well. Thank you, Matt. Um, all right, so I think that uh, that takes care of all the questions that we have right now. Um, does anybody have anything else that they would like to add before uh, we sign off on this webinar? Okay. Uh, Amy threw out there uh, that you get a free set of Ginzo knives if you sign up today. So uh, don't call my phone all at once, folks. Um, okay, so it looks like we have a couple of more questions um, from Amanda. Uh, is there any room for additional content each institution can add on, like a lecture from local survivors, or et cetera? That's a great question, Amanda. Heck yes, that is such a great question, and and I love that you asked it. Um, not only that, I mean, there there with this experience what you really may want to be looking at, and we're developing these with the Franklin Institute is programming. So we have been tasked with trying to create scenarios that are um, more kind of down to earth, that realistic, that people are actually going to have to deal with. Uh, we've been asked to to put in, you know, like how do you change a tire, things like that. And we're creating programming that really helps support those physical programs within the the institution. Now, on top of that, we would help you create uh, any additional programming, such as a lecture series from survivors. We have our list of survivors, and um, and the the people who wrote the book, they're they're very much involved with the process. So they're at our meetings weekly. Uh, they're bringing a lot of these um, experts and survivors to the exhibition. They know them uh, very well, uh, and we can uh, work with you to uh, approach some of those people who've worked with the book, but also local uh, experts and survivors we would encourage that you bring in uh, as well. And so, so those are some really great opportunities for programming. Um, thank you for that question, Amanda. Uh, so then we have another question from the Frost. Um, so how are you anticipating handling large amounts of school groups? Yeah, another question about throughput. Here you go, Jeffrey. Well, the nice thing about the way that this is set up is that it's organic. So, you know, if we have an influx, a large influx of guests that come in at once, um, there's the ability for them to spread out within the space. So with that, uh, each one of the interactives has uh, wide um, touch points and interface to really keep that 300 uh, at any one time. Uh, happening. So that's that's part of it is just the way that it's designed. So it's it's not going to bottleneck with 
um, particular places where it has to be a linear experience. It's really or, an organic experience. Now with that too, the nice thing about having someone like a pro is that the pro can help guide those groups in particular activities. So like a summer camp, uh, we can have that pro as a counselor that can really guide people through activities within the experience. This too is something, these facilitation uh, activities are things that we're developing with the Franklin. Of course, they will be developed more thoroughly as we get the experience on the floor. And uh, the great thing about it being in Philadelphia for so long is that as they develop these, we're also gonna be able to test them with actual groups. And by the time we're done, we'll, we'll present a facilitation book that that allows us to uh, support those larger group activities as well as um, the individual activities. Okay. Um, so one last time, were there any, uh, awesome, thank you. Thank you. Um, so were there any other questions that we can answer before we wrap this up? Um, all right. Okay, so um, you know you can type up your question, um, but in the meantime, I'm just gonna, you know, quickly kind of tell you guys um, that we will be following up after the webinar with um, not only a link of this recording of the webinar, so you can share it with your colleagues and your team, um, but also the PDF deck of this presentation, and then the 100% concept book featuring uh, all of the latest exhibit designs for your review. Um, and in, in addition to kind of all of these links and documents, uh, there's going to be a link for a survey. Um, and we're really hoping that you guys can, um, you know, join in on the survey. It should only take, you know, like uh, about 10 minutes. Um, and we're really hoping that uh, we can get your feedback on any of the exhibit components, um, any thoughts uh, whatsoever. We welcome them all. Um, and, you know, if you take the survey, then in addition to that, you will be getting um, a autographed version of the worst case scenario uh, handbook. And uh, turning it over to Jeffrey real quick. I just wanted to follow up on that survey. Not only do you get a signed copy of the handbook, which is amazing, but um, but also, uh, you know, this is this is to help us to, and, and I know that we are, we're asking a lot of, of institutions to sign up before you've come and seen it and vetted it and all that. Um, but we are looking for your input and we are sincerely placing it into the experience. So if you do have comments, as you see the content book as it comes through and you have comments, thoughts, ideas, please send them to us because the more feedback we get, the better the exhibition is going to be and the more it's going to be on mission for your institution uh, as well as institutions around you know, the country and the world. So um, that's a sincere request that as you look through it, uh, we, we do want your feedback. We want your honest thoughts and, and hopefully that'll help you um, as you as you go ahead and, and cross my fingers, sign up for this project. Yes. So, yeah, and just as important as uh, all that feedback um, is we really need uh, venues like you guys to, you know, sign up for this exhibition uh, to bring, you know, this, this magnificent kind of vision um, to fruition. So um, contact me, uh, you know, or anybody at the EDG team, and we will be um, extremely helpful or extremely glad to, to help you along with your booking. So um, I think unless there are any other questions, um, we would like to, uh, you know, wrap this up by just saying thank you for joining us today. Um, we really appreciate it. We cannot do this without you guys, um, and we hope to speak with you soon. So um, uh, with all that said, uh, I hope you have, uh, you know, a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you.